Let's count down the best 20 plugins currently available. And keep in mind that these are just our opinions, so if we don't mention your favorite plugin, let us know what it is and what makes it one of your favorites. Also, I want to stress that these are our personal picks. This video is not sponsored, and no one has asked us to include their plugin in the video. Now, real quick, we have a new membership. New members get 10 free mastered songs, so your next release can sound as good as possible. You also get unlimited feedback on your mixes, both from us and our community members, to get a lot of helpful perspectives fast. And you get in-depth educational courses to learn both the fundamentals and the nuances of audio engineering. There's more on that at the end of the video. Starting off at number 20, we have Chandler Limited Curve Bender. So this is a faithful recreation of the Curve Bender Mastering Equalizer. Just like the original, we can affect the left and the right, as well as the mid and the side channel separately. We get four bands with two Q values, low and high pass filters, and we can view some metering with the toggles up top. Although I don't use this plugin too often, I have to admit that it sounds fantastic and it adds a noticeable character to the signal. So let's take a listen to it on a stereo mix. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bounce it. We does it big up in it. For number 19, we have Ozone Imager. Admittedly, Isotope's Ozone Suite isn't my favorite, but their imager is pretty unique. Offering four bands with distinct imaging is definitely helpful and something that I can see as a shortcut on an instrument bus like BGVs or guitars. It sounds great, it's simple to use, and it offers something that other stereo imaging plugins just don't frequency specific imaging, and selectable imaging types. Now, I don't think this version is the most up to date since they update their mastering suite so often, but let's take a listen to it on an instrument bus. Coming in at number 18 is the Kirkhoff EQ. Now, although I thought that this plugin would replace the Pro-Q3, for me it was a little too cumbersome to use on a regular basis. That said, it does offer the most functionality and features of any parametric EQ that's currently available, with 32 bands, dynamic EQ, a huge number of filters to choose from, and more. So, if you're looking for an alternative to the Pro-Q3, I would highly recommend this plugin. Let's take a listen to it and use some of its dynamic features. For number 17, we have CompFET76. So there are a lot of 1176 emulations out there, but I think that Arturia made the best one, at least the best one that doesn't require a universal audio processor. Having used the original unit multiple times and similar designs from other companies, this plugin feels like a combination of all of their best assets. Now I love the advanced section to get a little bit more control, especially the time warp function, which creates a surprisingly significant change to the timbre of the compression. So let's listen to it on some drums. At number 16, we have P440 Sweet Spot EQ. This mastering compressor is deceivingly simple. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. The filters are incredibly musical sounding, and unique features like T-Bow, which folds the side image signals into the lows, or Tremor, which introduces harmonics that match the Earth's natural resonance, make this a really unique EQ. It includes five transformer emulations, five different hardware routing emulations, and a modified circuit, which when combined with the O2 Air and Soul Saturation models, creates a really good sound. So let's take a listen to it on a stereo mix. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. At number 15, we have Weiss DS. Although designed for a simple purpose, this mastering grade DSer is the most transparent one I've ever heard. It gives you two filters for DSing, optional mid-side routing, and my personal favorite, access to the attack and the release times of the DSing. Now with variable compression times and a soft knee option, it can create an incredibly smooth and pleasant high end to either a mix or a individual vocal. Let's take a listen to it on some vocals. From the window to the wall, we get in lit up in it. Bit. From the window to the wall, we get in lit up in it. Bit. Next for number 14, we have press work. So at first glance, this is definitely an intimidating plugin, but altering the initial view mode makes it easier to tailor the effect for a particular purpose. Aside from having my favorite compression sound for instrument buses and stereo mixes, it offers so many functions that it's hard to find a signal that it can't work for. Now some highlights include the INT, or interactive detection, which uses variable feed forward and feedback detection to create a truly unique sound. 
Dual phase rotation is a natural way to soften transients with mild phase cancellation, and the nonlinearity dial in the compression window lets you emulate some classic compressors. Let's listen to it with the mid-side mode enabled to hear how it could be used to widen a signal while also introducing a unique timbre. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. Coming in at number 13, we have the Pro Q3. So someone once described this plugin to me as the stock EQ everyone deserves, and I think he was right. This is the EQ that I always go for when I need to make a quick change to something. Its filters are accurate, it has a great UI, and it offers everything that you need to EQ a signal without too many distractions. The sidechain analyzer is a personal favorite for when I just can't figure out what's masking what. So let's take a listen to it with left, right, mid, and side filters enabled to hear how powerful of an effect EQ can be. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. At number 12, we have the Pro L2. So, like their EQ, Fab Filter made a simple, easy to use, great sounding plugin that has some advanced features tucked away if they're needed. The punchy and the dynamic algorithms are some personal favorites, and the channel linking dials give a surprising amount of control over the limiter's attenuation and a signal's final stereo width. The loudness meter is a bonus, and it makes this a great final limiter in a mastering chain. So let's take a listen to it, and notice how the dynamic algorithm increases the drive of a master. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it, at number 11, we have Celestial. So Acoustica Audio gets some flack for their often strange marketing, but honestly, this plugin has some of the best saturation I've ever heard. Is it kinda clunky? Yeah. Does it eat up way too much CPU? Definitely. And am I always confused about which one to pick from the menu? Absolutely. But the texture and the imaging more than make up for all that. It's best on a master, so let's listen to it on a stereo mix. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. For number 10, we have the Oxford Limiter. So I wanted to put this at number one, but I have to admit, it's kind of a one trick plugin. I don't even use its limiter because I don't like the sound. But the enhance function is incredible. It could take any dull mix or instrument bus and create something spectacular from it, and in a way that other upward processors just can't. So let's take a listen to it on a mix and notice how much the loudness is increased and how the details are brought to the forefront. For number nine, we have the Golf Oz EQ. So I don't like how helpful this plugin is because I know if my mixes were better, I wouldn't need it. Regardless, it's probably the most useful plugin to use if you can't figure out what's missing. It uses dynamic program dependent EQ to quickly alter the signal's frequency response, which typically results in significantly reduced masking. Now I don't think it's perfect, but it can still salvage just about any bad mix I have, as well as give me a good indication of what frequencies I have too much of or too little by simply dragging the recover and the tame functions. So let's listen and notice how it makes it a lot easier to hear various instruments by reducing masking. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. At number eight, we have shade. So UVI's EQ is definitely one of a kind. It's almost identical to the Pro-Q3, and it offers a great user interface, but it also includes modulation. Now, once a filter is created, various modulation types could be introduced for both practical and incredibly creative processing. For example, say I want to introduce an LFO to the frequency of a bell, I would create the LFO, adjust the settings how I want them, and then link it to the frequency dial of the filter. Or if I wanted to randomize a filter, I could do that. Or if I wanted to compress or expand a band based on the sidechain, I would create a follower and link it to the gain. So let's listen to it and notice how the introduction of modulation makes this EQ incredibly unique and versatile. Coming in at number seven, we have the Pro C2. So the Pro C2 made it up higher on this list than FabFilter's EQ or their limiter, since it can create effects that other compressors I have can't. Additionally, it's easy to use, has a good interface, and is super versatile due to the multiple compression algorithms. My favorite use for it is bringing vocals right up to the front of a mix. The vocal algorithm mixed with some look ahead and auto makeup gain was honestly a game changer for my vocal chains. Let's listen to it, tailored for the vocal, and notice how much work it does without making the vocal sound over-processed. 
From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. For number six, we have Satin. Now, this one would probably be lower on a lot of people's lists, but I honestly use it on every mix I do in one way or another. Its effect is subtle, but it offers the most realistic emulation of tape that I've ever come across, even when compared to plugins with very similar functions. Now, personally, I love how everything is integrated, so increasing the bias changes the frequency response as well as the point of saturation. Speed and pre-emphasis are heavily correlated to saturation and frequency, while crosstalk introduces noticeable changes to the stereo width and the perceived depth of a signal. Now, I use the studio mode more often than not, but the delay and the flanging options also sound fantastic. Let's listen to it on a drum bus. At number five, we have Seventh Heaven. Now, sometimes when I'm mixing, I use a different reverb plugin than this one, and I can't figure out what's wrong with the mix until I end up trading out all the reverbs for this one. I guess it just sounds great no matter what it's on. It uses impulse responses from the Precast DM7 reverb unit, but with advanced functions like ducking, frequency-specific decay times, and a lot more. Now, it's versatile for sure, but it just has something about it that I can't put my finger on. So let's listen to it and notice how full, present, and natural it makes the signal sound. From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. Number four is Soothe 2. So similar to the Golf Oz EQ, this plugin can really help when you just can't figure out what's wrong with a mix, but it offers a lot more flexibility and the ability to tailor the resonance reduction to any particular problem that you might be encountering. It works on poorly recorded signals, singers with unpleasant resonances, instrument buses with clashing frequencies, and masters that need very subtle balancing. The emphasis EQ in the middle, as well as the mix, the depth, sharpness of the compression bands, and more, make this a fantastic sounding and incredibly versatile plugin. Let's take a listen to it on some vocals and notice how quickly it cleans them up. From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. From the window to the wall, we getting lit up in it, bit. For number three, we got Newfangled's Elevate. So Elevate is four amazing plugins within one interface. It's a limiter, an EQ, transient shaper, and saturator or clipper. And the limiter and the transient shaper both work with 26 bands, meaning the limiting and the shaping are program dependent and frequency specific. So when it comes to limiting, I've noticed that this lets me get to a louder sound with less overall attenuation, while the EQ, the shaper, the clipper all work together to emphasize what a master needs more of. Now, if you don't want to use all four of the processors, they also include them as separate units. Let's take a listen to it on a master and notice how the combination of processors really improves the sound. From the window to the wall, we get lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. At number two is Elephant. So I'll be honest, this is not the best looking plugin, but no one's going to be able to see it when they're listening to your track. It's a better sounding version of FabFilters Pro L2, and it has a depth to it that that plugin doesn't even try to have. Like the Pro L2, we can choose from multiple algorithms, but with the option to alter their settings. Everything from the transient time and shape to the knee of attenuation and post attenuation expansion can be altered. Now I've tried a lot of limiters, and once you get the hang of this one, it's by far the best limiter currently available. Let's take a listen to it on a mix. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bouncing. We does it big up in it. Last up in the number one spot is Saturn 2. So if you've watched our videos before, odds are you saw this coming. This is a personal favorite, and I can definitely see why some people shy away from it. But once you get used to its modulation options, you'll realize how incredible this plugin is. Not only do the various distortion types sound fantastic, but they can be modulated to create dynamic, realistic, and distinct saturation. A good example is the mythical 3D preset. Multiple envelope followers are adjusting the amount of the drive and the drive's mid-side panning according to the incoming signal and in a frequency-specific way. Meanwhile, the 3D depth slider controls the input and the output's respective levels and panning, resulting in dynamic saturation to emphasize depth and dynamic panning to vary the stereo width. Meanwhile, we got multiple bands that are shaping the frequency response via their unique harmonic formations and their tone sliders. So let's listen to the preset, and I think if you listen a few times, you realize how complex and intricate the effect is. From the window to the wall, we get it lit up in it, bit. bouncing. We does it big up in it, bit. 
As audio engineers, we want to fulfill our creative potential. We want to know how to achieve a sound quickly and efficiently without having to second guess ourselves or endlessly revise a production, mix, or master. Having mastered thousands of tracks over the past 20 plus years, we know how important it is to put your best foot forward as an engineer or an artist, but what's even more important is having the resources and the knowledge to create your best work. Now that's why we created the Sage Audio Membership, a collective space where you could have your tracks mastered, engage with a thriving community, and learn the skills you need to take your project from start to finish and be happy with the final result. Now a membership like this is nothing without a strong community. That's why we're giving 10 free masters to every new member. Our goal is to have as many engineers as possible, sharing their ideas, providing feedback on each other's mixes and masters, and helping to build a place where anyone can learn. To give our members a great foundation for successful projects, we created a four hour long mastering course, starting with fundamentals and ending with mastering chains for specific genres. So far, we've seen and heard great results with both new engineers and seasoned ones noticing a huge improvement in their mastering. Now a mixing course will be released next with more in-depth courses to follow. Now in the past, you probably shared your mixes and your masters with some friends and fellow musicians while piecing together often conflicting info from across the internet to try and improve your productions. But with this membership, you have the option to receive feedback on your mixes and your masters from multiple engineers, including Sage Audio engineers. At the same time, you could learn from a coherent, logical, and to the point source giving you the tools that you need to take your productions to a new level. Meanwhile, you could have us master your tracks with your 10 included free masters, as well as five additional mastering credits that you'll receive each month. Furthermore, you'll have access to mixed tracks for mastering practice, raw sessions for mixing practice, start to finish mixing and mastering chain templates, and plug-in presets designed by us. Right now, we're offering a 70% discount for the full membership, bringing the monthly total down to $15. This price is locked in, it won't go up for as long as you're a member. So sign up today to receive your discount and 10 free masters. We're excited to see what you create and we can't wait to help along the way.